on to another part of Smash Square Pants the movie game. This time we're doing Sunday Driving, which I don't fucking like. Here's why I don't like Sunday Driving. Because Sunday Driving involves having to follow like peanuts. So here's the thing. There are obviously going to be chests around here that we have to go and find. We cannot get any chests. Oh, I'd love to go ahead and just, you know, try to get the chess. If you try to get the chess, the game has the tendency to just fail you for that. Like, the game does not like it when you go for any of the shortcuts. And, uh, yeah, you just kind of end up failing because of it. I do remember from the past, I tried to go for, like, this shortcut over here is very obvious. You can see it right to my right. There's a brick wall there and a path. I could take that. I could legitimately take that and go for the chest over there. It's a shortcut. makes you go faster. But if I do that, the game will usually give me the fail. Because I did not follow this peanut to a T. See? Even just being behind a little bit, the game is like, you're losing him. The game is kind of stingy about how far back you can really be. Or even how far in front you can be of this motherfucker. Like, there's a chest over here, and I think it's the only chest where I can potentially get it. Because it's in the main path. But it's in such a wide area, and this fucker goes fast. If you go for it, you're mainly going to lose a lot of time, and you'll usually end up being too far behind to where you end up failing. I mean, at the very least, you're getting, like, the main path here. You're getting, like, what the game is trying to make you go for, for the main part. Also, I'm just really screwing myself over here. So I have to use the boost. Guess I can get myself some more stuff. But yeah, as you can see, not only is there, like, you know, sound effects going on and such, but I am not going as fast as I can be because I took damage. And in fact, it should get worse when I take damage here. Oop, I avoided it. So yeah, as you can tell, this guy, he's usually as fast as you are when you have three fire patties, which is why I need to get that guy pay immediately. Because if you are on two, he's a bit faster than you, and that does mean a lot. And if you're on one, you are usually not going to be fast enough to keep up with him on your, on one burger left. And if you get too far away from him, it's a fail. So, you are probably going to end up losing. Not only are you not allowed to go to any shortcuts, you're also not allowed to take much damage. There's not even that much crab patties around here for you to just, like, refill from. You cannot fuck up. You just cannot. Hey, it's not like he actually rubber bands when you get in front of him, either. He keeps to a pace. And his pace is fast. They just made him fast. They don't, they didn't rubber band him at all, they didn't make him, you know, go to a pace and go fast if you get closer to him, no, they just make him go the same speed essentially, because the game already knows what your speed is, and if you nitro, like, you're mainly gonna nitro if you take damage, because it's gonna fuck you, or you go for a turn, because he's gonna go fast around a turn, no matter what you're doing. So yeah. Unfortunately, I cannot get any of these treasure chests in this run. I can outside of this run, but in the actual run itself, no. This is... I have to just follow the peanut. I have no choice but to follow the peanut. And then we get into this. The game does want you to go into here, and this is the worst part. Remember, no rubber banding, you can't rubber band in this bullshit, and you have no control really over this one. It's so easy to end up failing here and getting stuck here. 
And the game doesn't care. The game does not care. If you're not following him really well, you're gonna fail. So yeah, that part there is an asshole. And after that, that's it. We did it. Well done, Patrick and SpongeBob. Here's your reward. She said my name first. I'm so proud of you, Patrick. Anyway, that's gonna be it for that one. Unfortunately, the next bit isn't much better than what we just went through. When SpongeBob and Patrick awaken from their sweet dreams of ice cream sundaes and dancing peanuts, they discover that they have become prisoners of the Cyclops. For you see, gentle viewers, our heroes had at long last made it to Shell City and had discovered its awful secret. Shell City was nothing more than a souvenir shop. Those who were captured were dried up and turned into smelly knickknacks. And that is precisely what was happening to our two friends. The situation seemed to be completely and utterly hopeless. But they were saved by the tear of the goofy goobill, as well as a conveniently placed sprinkler system. King Neptune's crown lay nearby, but our heroes still needed to escape the treacherous depths of Shell City and get past their most dangerous adversary, the Cyclops. Oh no, Shell City was actually a shitty pawn shop. That sucks. You know what that sucks? This slotting level, which I think is the last one, because it fucking sucks. This is Shell City? What a horrible place! But don't worry, there must be a way out. Good job getting the crown. Are you kidding? That was easy. Yeah, we are the manliest of men. Then what about the hopelessness? Hopelessness? The weeping? Lady, you must have been watching over someone else. Never mind. There's no time to waste. Find a way out of here, get past the Cyclops, and back to the Krusty Krab too. Now let's say regular slime level, aka just hit things and yeah, they break. So, it's either targets or faucets or whatever, but it's finding stuff and getting all the stuff broken in order for you to be able to move on from there. And um, that's really it. It's just find stuff, break stuff, open path. And if you know what you're doing, this is honestly the shortest of them all, I believe. It's like the shortest um, of these sliding levels. But only if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, this is a tangled mess of a level. And that's by design, because there are a lot of branching paths in this one to where you are kind of going to end up confused on where to go. You'll be going for a lot of loops. Right now, it's not that bad, because it's just like the same sort of rope, um, or hose, really. These are all hoses that are floating in the air for some reason. But yeah, they're all hoses, and I'm nearly dead. But, um, yeah, all we gotta do is go around all these hoses, and eventually we'll find ourselves getting close to an area that has a, uh, a light stand just hovering down, ready for us to jump over to. All of these are gonna involve lights that we have to jump over to. See? But the main thing is that I need to go and grab the chests as well. How do you get the chests? Well, you have to know the specific path to go for in order to get them. This one's kind of annoying in the fact that you have to know a specific route. One that's not too obvious on where it is. But once you actually get to it and know where it is, it's not too terribly difficult to go for. You're probably thinking of jumping over there. No. In fact, you have to jump over to your right right now. But if you didn't, you're going the actual path over to there. Don't do that. Okay, you'll miss you'll miss pretty much 
all of that opportunity for a chest. Instead, you want to go ahead and go down that path again, but this time, you see how there was like a red um, hose just really out of the way? You have to jump across from that kind of tight turn over to that area that you can't really see because the camera is kind of slow and isn't making it easy for you to tell when to time it. Which means it's very much possible you can easily undershot it or just miss it entirely. I was able to get it though. You gotta avoid all the TNTs all the way to the chest. Unfortunately, you have to go around again. And uh, if you try to go backwards around here, all these paths are kind of narrow, so um... Yeah, the camera is gonna make you just have not a good time. But yeah, that was the first chest. And I think there were only three chests in this level. There were three chests in the previous one we just did with the fucking peanut, but again, I couldn't get any in that one. But we will get to that, we will get to that. But right now, we just have to go forward with this one, and hey, there's our path forward. Now, the thing about this one is that there are only two locked paths. That was the first locked path. The second one is finding targets. You break the targets, the lights drop down, each one goes down, and you have to get them all down in order to get a fairly long path over to the exit, which is the window. See? Lamps dropped. They're called lamps. I wouldn't call those lamps. I call them light sources. Like, I forgot the name of it. It's not lamps. Um. Now I know how my ancestors. Fuck! I I forgot what they're called. <laughs> Fluorescent lights. Like. I would call them fluorescent lights, not lamps. Anyway, we got two of them done. And as you can see, there's a lot of paths here right now. You can even see I just missed the target I could have gone for. But I'm going by in specific paths all the way. Because I don't want to miss anything. And that's the biggest issue about this. There's so much here that you don't really know what you're missing with these if you just cut the fucking areas. Eventually you will have to. If you want to get some of the chests, or if you want to get the fucking times done, you are 100% gonna have to cut some shit. Luckily, the time trials never want you to do this whole break the targets thing. That's not part of it. I know it's the ring challenges. It's only just getting from the start to finish. But you're probably wondering right now where the fuck we're supposed to go now. Because, hey, we just broke some shit. That's cool and all. But now what do we do? What path do we go for now to get our next target? And where is the chest? Well, let me go this way to the blue pipe, in the blue, uh, the blue hose. I keep calling them pipes, they're fucking hoses. And hey, there's the chest. Again, again. You kinda have to get kinda lucky if you jump if you don't wanna end up falling into the abyss. But as you also saw there, <laughs> also I think I'm dead. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh wait, I'm not dead, I'm not dead. I'm dead, don't worry, I'm dead. And by the way, if you do fail and die, the game at this point just teleports you straight to the exit area. Even if you haven't gotten everything yet, which I haven't. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take care of that last target. We know where it is, but I didn't get because I wanted to get the treasure chest. So as you saw there, the game wanted you to avoid getting that one target so that you can get a treasure chest. Otherwise, go for that target, you can't really get the treasure chest at all because you've missed your chance. And uh, now that all the lamps have dropped, the fluorescent lights have dropped, we can now move on forward. First of all, let me go ahead and take the entire pathway through. I don't want to miss anything. 
you can kind of see there's another chest there, our last one. We'll worry about that soon. Also, because I died, the crates came back so I can, you know, get up some more manly points. It's interesting how the game just sort of gives you the ones after a certain point on your manly points. Uh, but yeah, just go forward and, you know, get on the red, uh, I keep fucking up, red hose. This red hose here takes you directly to the lights, and it's all legitimately just a line. You just follow the line, get the million points on the way, and that's it. That is the entirety of this ending path here that leads to the exit. And if you want to beat the game, just go all the way through and that's it. If you want to 100% the game, however, you're going around this a second time. Because the game wants you to jump off to the right and get this chest, so then you have to go all the way back. It's, it's annoying, it's annoying, I will admit that it is annoying how much this game is just forcing you to stay here in the way of the chests and shit, and how much of a mess this path is. If you know what you're doing, this isn't that bad. As a kid, I was actually lost here, because it's such a mess, it's really easy to get confused. And I fucking hate this level because of it. Rock Slide is the worst, but this one is a confusion train wreck, and I don't like it either. But there you go. There's our exit, and once we go all the way through and get all our melee points over here, we are done with Shell City. Let's get the fuck out of here. You left a trail of debris in your wake, but you did make it, so here's your reward. Huzzah, we did it! We got the hell out of here and we got a token out of it as well! Nothing can possibly go wrong now, except for an amazing cutscene. And so, after escaping the hideous fate that awaited them in the clutches of the Cyclops, SpongeBob and Patrick find themselves standing on the beach, staring out at the vastness of the ocean. How are we gonna get back to Bikini Bottom? I can take you there. Who are you? I'm not a lifeguard, but I play one on TV. Hooray! So, uh, where's your boat? Boat? <laughs> Hooray! Nothing can stop us now! Bikini Bottom, here we come! Thank you, Hassel David Hoff, for letting us get the home. However, Dennis is back. And, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the easiest boss fight in this game. Dennis Part 2. Huh? Unidentified object off the hindquarters! Bigger boot? But how? Did you miss me? Ah! Ah! Yes! So here's how the fight goes. You are on the back of uh, Dassel Havenhoff, and uh, the problem is, you got this guy over here. He's really pissed off. He's throwing like spikes at you, and eventually these bat enemies start coming in. Uh, the problem is that you can easily bowl at him, and that's usually how you're supposed to attack him. And um, it deals like half of one of his bars every time. And because of that, you just do this six times and you win. Serious, I'll have to upgrade like ball here. This is a super easy fight, it'll beat him in seconds. <laughs> and that's it! That was the easiest boss fight in the game. Which means our next boss fight is going to be the hardest. We'll get to that when we get to that. Yay, Patrick! We did it! Hooray for SpongeBob and Patrick! <laughs> now, where were we? Wait, Dennis. Uh, look out behind you. That's it! 
I'm through messing around! See you later, fools! Huh? Ah! After many adventures, our heroes arrive back home. But it is a much, much different place from the one they left. Where there once was rolling green fields and bustling city streets, there is now Planktopolis, a city as dark and twisted as the heart of its teeny tiny ruler. All of Bikini Bottom's familiar faces are now covered by unfashionable mind-controlling buckets. And perhaps most horrible of all, King Neptune is at the Krusty Krab too, preparing to fry Mr. Krabs. Bikini Bottom's only hope rests with a small yellow sponge and a pink sea star. Can they survive the dangers of Planktopolis? Ooh, let us hope so. Of course, we're not getting to that right away because... <sighs> We have one more roadblock. We have one more serious roadblock, and it's this level. You know that last ability we don't have yet? This is the chance we gotta get it, and guess how much we fucking need for it? Plankton's bucket heads are being controlled by those statues. If we destroy them, we can break his control over them. I'm sorry, Spongebob. You don't have enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to give you the Sonic Wave. But, Mindy! Sorry, Spongebob. She never says how much. I it's 40. If you go through this game, and you don't actually go back and, you know, do all the backtracking shit, you will have... 35, I think. So you need to go and backtrack by force for five more tokens. This is where I go back to Rock Slide to take care of my fucking nightmares. Want another Goofy Goober token? Sorry, we don't have any to spare. Patrick, she meant, do we want another token? Right. Get to the bottom of the slide as quickly as you can. If you beat the time, I'll reward you. Okay, so first of all, the time trial itself, five minutes, thirty seconds. I can do this somewhat okay. This is not that big of an issue to me. However, you can easily notice how fucking long this level is. How long this sliding is. Over five minutes of this. This is such a long level, it's not even funny. And it's not even that much of an enjoyable one either. It's just stupid. I get one of the chests in this run. I did not get the other one. I kind of don't know how to get everything legitimately. Uh, one of the chests I actually got, I got without even doing it legitimately. Because the pathing for getting these legitimately is so out of the way, you almost never see it in the camera. Like, the game gives you almost no indication on where the actual legitimate path is for two of these chests. Hell, you don't even know the legitimate path for this area. All the chests are in these areas here. And the thing is, the game never gives you what the path actually is for this. And yeah, to take a longer route. So there are different paths, but the issue is that you have no idea. I'm actually, one of the chests over here to a different path, but you can kind of tell what I'm saying, which is this game does not really give you a good indication on where shit is in those specific kind of areas. And the two remaining chests we have left are not in that area, but they are in the second and third type of area. And the way you go for them, you will almost certainly never see how you're supposed to get there at all. You would probably be shocked by their location. 
I was shocked when I found out what the location is. Also, I now have enough upgrade points to get another bit of health. I'm not gonna worry about that for now. But what I am gonna worry about is the fact that if I don't jump left here, I'm not getting this. You can see that I just barely forgot and just barely noticed, oh hey, there was a floating chest to my left. So yeah, this is the actual path to get to the one chest here. There's another one in the next similar sort of area. Except for that one, it's like you have to go right immediately as soon as you enter the area. And it's like so far right that it's just stupid. It's just fucking stupid. That's what it is. It's just incredibly fucking stupid. And I'm probably not going to show you it. Because I do it in the melee time ship. And quite frankly, the melee time of Rock Slide is the hardest challenge to me. Out of every challenge in this game, there is nothing worse to me than the melee time challenge here and the melee time for the last um, Perry Patty race level. That we won't be getting to until after um, next part, I think. But yeah, seriously, I just, I legitimately just don't like this shit at all. But yeah, I think I have to go right here, right now, like right immediately to get to this path here. If you did not go immediately right from there, you just missed it. It's not obvious, is it? It's not obvious where that area is. But yeah, you're supposed to immediately know, hey, jump right, and it's there. It's a dick move by the devs. But regardless of that, you can get all the chests here, and you have enough time to beat this time here. So this is not that hard of a challenge. The regular time challenge is fairly easy. That was fast. Here's your reward. There are harder challenges to this slide. SpongeBob, she's hot. Patrick, I think she can hear you. Listen up, you two. As you're sliding, rings will appear along the way. You have a limited time to get through each ring. Get through every ring, and I'll give you a reward. The ring challenge, however, is annoying. It's also that glitch can happen where the game can just randomly make you lose all your speed for no reason. It hand it happens completely at random. Like I can't recreate it in the same spots kind of random. It just happens sometimes. It's dumb. And you don't want it to happen to you on a melee run. Like at all. Because it will guarantee you're gonna fail for the most part. But yeah, um, for the most part, this sucks. This just one just sucks. You can't go for the shortcuts, really. And to make matters worse, sometimes the rings here are just deceitful. They legitimately put some of this shit in here to be an asshole. The way they position it all, it's a dick move. But, it's not the worst dick move. And, quite honestly, it's not even that hard. It can be really deceiving. Like right now, I'm gonna go the actual normal path for once. I never even shown this path normally. I never even go for this path ever in any other run except the ring challenge. Because why would you? Why would she go this way? 
other than for the ring challenge. Why would you ever take this path? But yeah, like... And here's, here's something interesting. I've seen speedrunners, like, after the fact, I've seen speedrunners do, like, how they speedrun this shit. And there is a point where they take a massive dive down from a certain point. And it's up over across, like, a mountain area. And the thing is, it makes the entire game just sort of deload for a second and then reload. And because it just deloaded like that, all of the spin animation shit that all the paths were doing beforehand, you know how there was that spinning thing with all the platforms and shit, when you go over to the lava areas, like right up ahead right now, you know how you have those spinning spike areas, see that shit? It deloaded to where all these animations just stopped. They played the stop animation all them immediately, and they didn't have to wait at all or even worry about which path to go for. They knew where to go exactly. So, they made a glitch in a way where the animation of everything just fucked up. And the thing is, when it comes to dev time, I'm not even sure if even the devs were doing this or not because the dev time for this one sucks I legitimately hate all the dev times in this game I find it to be the most abhorrent fucking thing to worry about But yeah, I'm going to essentially just, you know, go through this first, and then we're going to get the chest, and then I'm actually going to fucking show you the run that I got for the manly time run. And I'll also tell you about what the speedrun time was, what record, as well as the dev time in this game. So, we beat the ring challenge, and it wasn't that horrible, but yeah, you can tell it's just kind of a douche move still. And, uh, there you go. Here is your reward. You've earned it. I've got challenges. Well, we've got skills. We do? Oh, can I have mine now? Please, please, please. Well, if you can beat this manly time down the slide, you will be rewarded. Right. The manly time. Four minutes, ten seconds. Over a minute lowered. And it made matters worse. I could not beat in my first run, obviously, because I failed there, but also because I had to get this chest. And if I went right here, I would get it normally. I did not do it normally. This is how I always got this as a kid. This is, I think, how most people got this chest. That is not how you're supposed to get it. Fuck you, good developers. That's how most people will get that. Okay, so. Now it's time for the run. So, again... I'm not taking speedrun paths. I don't look any speedruns up for this shit. I try to make my own path and just try to beat the time my own way. Okay? So, no dev time shit and no speedrun shit. This is me just doing this as fast as I can in my own headspace of what is fast to me. Now I'm going to read out to you what the dev time is for this. You can see that the time we have right now is pretty fucking bad, okay? 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Pretty bad. How about 3 minutes and 33 seconds?
Now, to give you a judgment of how bad that is, the world record time for this one that is actually, like, drawn. Like, there are two people who have this time. Because some a lot of these actually have multiple people that have the same time. Uh, let me look at who got this one first, though. Oh, this is going to be a bit tight. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I think that I've been the same time, but I'm going to go by a day of difference. Laddie, and then Julie Voy Voyer. I don't, I don't know how to say your name, I'm sorry. War, Voyer, whatever. Three minutes and 14 seconds. The dev time is three minutes and 33 seconds. That is honestly really fucking tight if the world record is that much. Next. Just saying. Just fucking saying, okay? Look, I even have to do this shit, and I know I'm not fast enough to even, you know, beat the dev time. But yeah, like... The dev times are assholes here. They're horrible. I fucking hate them. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering, there is another drawer time uh, in this one, but it's for bosses. Because why not? They did a boss rush, I guess. And their boss rush, which is a completely optional thing, by the way, is also drawn by Laddie and then Julie Boyer. In fact, Julie Boyer takes up almost every single world record here. So yeah, like, Julie is the speed king or queen, considering it's Julie. Like, that's a feminine name, but they are the speed king or queen of these time challenges and ring challenges. But also boss rushes, because these two beat the bosses, all of them, in 36 seconds. That's pretty crazy. Actually, no, I'm lying. <laughs> What's actually listed here is the Frogfish is 36 seconds, Dennis is 15 seconds, and Dennis Part 2 is 10 seconds. The only one not here is the final boss. Don't know why, but whatever. I beat this time, by the way, in just under 4 minutes 10 seconds. I just barely made it. I hate this fucking time. That was great sliding. Here is your reward. The last challenge of this slide is to beat your own time. But how can we beat our own time? Our best time will always be our best time, so we'll never beat it. Huh? I understand. Try our best to best our best time and be the best test. Just try beating your previous best time. We are not beating our own time. I don't plan to. What I do plan to do, however, is get our final ability. And you already know what it is. It's SpongeBob's rocket bubble ability. It's being able to have the rocket come up and then being able to aim at shit and blow shit up. And, you know, it's the same thing as Battle Bikini Bottom's rocket ability. It just has different look to it because it's going to be a guitar instead of a bubble blowing thing. So let's get it, Mandy. Come on. Let's go. SpongeBob, you've got enough Goofy Goober tokens for me to teach you a new ability. You have a special power that you can use. I, uh, do? Yes, you have the power of music. Two hundred fifty-seven and a half watts of ear-splitting metal! The power of music! You can steer the sonic wave right to where you want it to hit. We did it, Mindy! We went to Shell City and got Neptune's crown! 
Oh, SpongeBob, I knew you could do it. But my father is already at the Krusty Krab 2 on the other side of Planktopolis. Oh no, there are bucket heads everywhere. How will we get through? I found out that Plankton is controlling the bucket heads using those giant statues. If we destroy them, we can break his control. Let's get it on. And there you go. And with that, I can also now just, you know, show you it. See? A really cool rock and roll look to it. That's it. I'm gonna upgrade next time. But for now, thanks for watching. Because next time, we're going to go back and we're going to go and get all of the Sonic Wave guitar challenges done and take care of this main level. I will see you then for that. Bye!